Hello everyone, in this video we will discuss about Hashimoto's thyroiditis. So thyroiditis, uh, it means inflammation of the thyroid gland and it is of various variety. It can be infectious, it can be due to autoimmune reasons and it can be due to granulomatous in thyroiditis. Here we are discussing about autoimmune thyroiditis that is the Hashimoto's one. So this was firstly described by Hakaru Hashimoto and this is also known as Hashimoto's disease also known as lymphocytic thyroiditis we will understand why it is known as lymphocytic thyroiditis and stroma lymphomatosa okay going to the journal introduction then the pathogenesis and then the morphology of the thyroid in this disease firstly the Hashimoto's thyroiditis it is characterized by gradual thyroid failure because of autoimmune destruction of the thyroid gland and it occurs in mostly middle-aged women. Uh, it occurs between 45 to 65 years of the age and is more common in women than in the men. As, as is the other autoimmune diseases. Going to the pathogenesis. Now as we have already understood that this is an autoimmune disease. So here we can see this is the thyroid epithelium. And here there is uh, induction of thyroid autoimmunity. Okay, because of some reasons there is thyroid, uh, there is an autoimmune reaction, there is breakdown of the self tolerance and because of this there is activation of uh, CD8 cells, there is activation of CD4 cells and also this was uh, the cell mediated immunity which is activated and there is also activation of the plasma cells. So when the CD8 cells which is also known as cytotoxic T cells they activate they are direct killers they are cytotoxic cells they uh, lead to T cell mediated cytotoxicity and they injure the thyroid epithelium. Then there are CD4 cells. They uh, What they do is they mostly produce various cytokines like interferon gamma. Now this interferon gamma is always responsible for activating the macrophages. Wherever you will uh, find interferon gamma it is always responsible for activating macrophages. And this macrophages they again what they do is they cause thyrocyte injury. They cause thyroid epithelium injury. And then there are plasma cells. Now these plasma cells, as you know, plasma cells, they produce antibodies. So here they can produce various antithyroid antibodies, anti-TSH uh, antibodies, antithyroid peroxidase antibodies. And these antibodies, they can further cause antibody-dependent cell-mediated cytotoxicity. So this is uh, all the reasons by which the thyroid epithelium is injured in case of Hashimoto's thyroiditis. So Hashimoto's thyroiditis, uh, we have already understood about the uh, pathogenesis but just uh, repeating it again. So it is caused firstly by the breakdown of the self-tolerance to the thyroid autoantigens and then there is uh, when the various mechanism that is the CD4 cells, CD8 cells and the plasma cells, they what they do is they cause the thyrocyte injury by apoptosis, they injure it and then when the, the cells they die, the remaining of the thyroid parenchyma, it is replaced by mononuclear cell infiltration which includes mainly the inflammatory cells mostly the lymphocytes and the fibrosis because lymphocytes they are only responsible they, the CD4 the CD8 cells these are the lymphocytes which are uh, seen in the case of Hashimoto's thyroiditis even you can find plasma cells because they are responsible in the pathogenesis so going to the morphology how the organ will appear is it will be diffusely enlarged the capsule will be intact and the uh, well uh, the gland which is uh, involved will be demarcated from the other normal gland then the cut su uh, surface is pale is yellow tan is f uh, firm however the normal thyroid it is not pale it has a it has colloid in it it has a brownish tinge to it it is not a yellowish or firm uh, organ now microscopically what you will find it is very characteristic microscopy of it is very characteristic you find many mononuclear inflammatory cells which is small lymphocytes uh, you will better understand by this picture 
so you can see over here we can find here this is the normal thyroid okay it is a colloid filled we can see there is a colloid there is this is the normal part however here you can find there is uh, the you can see there is lot of bluish tinge to it and this bluish tinge is because of majority of the lymphocytes over here so sometimes the lymphocytes they uh, get activated so much that they they try to mimic the secondary lymphoid organ and they even have germinal center inside them and the thyroid epithelium it undergoes change like uh, you can see in the next picture uh, firstly you can see this is the th uh, lymphocytes and this is the germinal center and this was this is the normal thyroid so you can see there is uh, majority of lymphocytes are present over here so now in this picture you can see it better so you can see this is this thyroid epithelium which is involved in case of Hashimoto's thyroiditis it is not normal it has uh, uh, the there is an increased eosinophilia to it there is uh, a thing known as hurdle cell change the oncocytic change is seen in this epithelium so uh, in that what happens is the cell enlarges there is a increase in eosinophilia of the cytoplasm and this is very characteristic of Hashimoto's thyroiditis so so what is the characteristic of Hashimoto's thyroiditis it is the uh, uh, the hurdle cells and the lymphocytes and these lymphocytes can even have germinal center inside them okay now going to the cytology cytology is uh, done in case of Hashimoto's thyroiditis because any swelling of the thyroid is uh, firstly sent for any radio diagnosis and also for the cytology so in the cytology what you will find is you will find many Herzl cells that are oncocytes also these are known as oncocytes also so you will find the oncocytes and then you will find many lymphocytes and this is very diagnostic of Hashimoto's thyroiditis and when it is combined by its serology when we find in serology there are many anti-TSH antibodies so when you find both together it is very diagnostic of Hashimoto's thyroiditis now going to the clinical course lastly so uh, it uh, is any thyroid uh, problem mostly comes to attention when there is a pain uh, then the, there is enlargement of the thyroid and mainly if there is a thyroid enlargement in a middle aged woman we suspect an autoimmune disease also and in this case in classic case of Hashimoto's thyroiditis there is hypothyroidism because there is injury to the thyroid epithelium so but you have to remember it because uh, when the disease starts sometimes there is transient thyrotoxicosis sometimes there is increase in the thyroid hormones because when the thyroid follicles they injured they get injured they release the thyroid hormones firstly which is known as Hashi toxicosis and then when this is released and uh, that time you will find the thyroid hormones are increased however when there is injury and it, it leads to permanent damage of the thyroid epithelium then the T, T3 and T4 uh, they fall down and there is permanent hypothyroidism in this case firstly there is sometimes hyperthyroidism then normal thyroidism and then it goes to hypothyroidism and uh, also like other autoimmune disease Hashimoto's thyroiditis can be associated with other autoimmune disease like SLE, Misthenia gravis, Jogren syndrome and because the lymphocytes are involved and lymphocytes can even form uh, secondary lymph node like structure uh, there can be uh, increased risk of development of various lymphomas in this case also okay so this was all about the Hashimoto's thyroiditis do like share and subscribe if you like these videos thanks for watching this video